Before I move on, I just wanted to take care of some odds and ends. Beginning with a gearbox gasket, I didn't have any around, so I took some gasket material and traced it with the uh, small half of the gearbox. I didn't feel like going around and doing the traditional way of kind of hammering that out. But luckily, on the forum, I have a gasket library or template library where you can find all kinds of gaskets, especially for the uh, Minarelli engines and like the GY6 150s and the 139 QMBs. So I just went on there and printed this out, and I'll just use this template to uh, help me finish this gasket so I don't have to tap it out. I need some reed block gaskets, so I might as well do that while I'm at it. I'm glad that's over with. Now I'm working on harvesting some parts off of an old engine that I had around. Uh, brake parts here, stuff that I can't seem to find, or at least I can't find all of them online filler plug, just some small stuff like that. I'm getting ready to get the gearbox together and just wanted to tell you a little bit about that because everything in my gearbox will be brand new. Uh, so what I'm doing is what we've been calling a third support or a third bearing setup for the primary drive shaft. And this is the primary drive shaft and normally you have a bearing right here in front of this gear and that is housed here in the large case half. And then on the other end of this, this is by the way the, the uh, shaft that your rear pulley and clutch ride on. So on the other end of this, past the clutch, this section will interact with a bearing that's inside of the CVT cover. And that's the only support it has. It has the CVT cover bearing here, the bearing here, and the large case half. And these have quite a bit of play in them. Like if you ever check out a Yamaha Zuma case, uh, you'll see that the gears are very rigid in there, but in this, the primary drive shaft can move quite a bit and it ends up being a, a common point of failure or at least a wear point for these gearboxes. So, this is from an Eaton Beamer, uh, also the two-stroke engine, but this has a nub here on the end, and that nub interacts with a bearing that will be inside of the small gearbox half here. And normally on the, uh, these Vento and CT, CPI engines, every one that I've had, you've got this area for a bearing, but there's nothing in there. But on the Eaton's and some of the other scooters, there is a 6200 bearing in here. And then this nub will ride inside of that bearing. So then you've got a bearing support here, a bearing here, and then a bearing on the very end. And this bearing, by the way, that's in the, the uh, CVT cover is, mm, I won't say useless, but it could use a lot of work. I don't really like those a lot, so having these two really firms it up quite a bit and takes some of that play out, and it has seemed to uh, lead to less gearbox trouble when I've been running those. So that's what I'm going to do with this. So this is brand new from an Eaton, an Eaton Beamer, or Eton Beamer, I'm not sure how you're supposed to say that. And then... Those have very deep gears. They have, uh, 
Oh, it's 13.52 or 55 to 1, something like that final drive ratio, which I don't want. But stage 6 offers a secondary gear set. And with this, it takes it to roughly 11 to 1 final drive ratio, which is a pretty good final drive ratio. Uh, stock for the Vento Tritons is 10 to 1. So this slows you down maybe a little bit, but it's got good power off the line, doesn't slow you down too much. It's been a pretty good all-around gear set for me. And this Stage 6 kit has the secondary gears as well as the complete intermediate shaft here. Um, it's a better look at that. So you don't even have to, normally you would have to press this apart and press your gears together, back together with the gears that you're swapping in, but this is just a swap in kind of gear set. You don't have to do any pressing to get these together because they just include this. So primary drive shaft, there's the axle or output shaft, here's the intermediate shaft, it's all there. Um, you need some bits and pieces still if you're starting from scratch, like you need the uh, retainer that holds in the uh, primary drive shaft or the bearing for it really. You may need some shim washers or the shim washer. Um, but for the most part, you can start from scratch and have all brand new stuff with just Eaton Beamer, uh, primary drive shaft, and then this stage six secondary kit. Uh, there's the part number in case you want that. And again, that'll take it to right about 11 to one final drive ratio. There's a malfunction that I've never had with one of these cases. Uh, I went to put this retainer on to the primary drive shaft and it wouldn't line up. You can see it's actually pretty far out. Got a couple more of them, try those. They don't line up. Not a real big deal. I can just uh, hog that hole out a little bit more in the retainer. But yeah, just never seen that one before on here. this M8 by 1.25 by 20 millimeter uh, magnetic drain plug on eBay. I like running magnetic drain plugs in these because uh, collect some of the metal gives you an idea of what's going on in there. It's a little longer than uh, stock drain plug but I don't think it should matter. You can see it sticks out a little bit more than the stock one but it's not going to be in the way of anything so it's not a problem. put a sealant or a gasket dressing on these uh, gearbox gaskets but for years now I've just been doing a very light like film of grease on there just so it doesn't stick and it won't uh, mess up the gasket and I can reuse it and I haven't had any issues that way. Sometimes I get a bit of resistance uh, when I'm using these third support bearings. Usually a little bit of tapping will do it. If tapping doesn't do it, then I'll have to take it back apart and see what's going on. All right, so I'm gonna try with nothing but this, and I'm pretty sure that's gonna be the issue, but I just wanna see for sure. Yeah, that's the problem. 
got all the bolts started in the gearbox and now I'm just going to go in kind of a crisscross pattern and hope it pulls itself in. And if you do something like this and it doesn't pull in fairly easy then you'll need to stop and investigate again and see what's going on. This doesn't seem to be a lot of trouble to go in so I think we'll be okay. And I can tell as I'm going that basically the worst of the pressure is all right around this area where that shaft is trying to push in. So now it's pulled all the way in. Everything looks good that way. But when you do a gearbox like this, there's a spacer that hopefully you saw me put on the intermediate shaft. And sometimes it needs that and sometimes it doesn't. And I'm thinking it probably didn't need it this time. Because when I go to turn the gears, I can't move either one at all. So now I've got to take this back apart and I'll try putting it together without the spacer and see what happens then. You can see it's a whole lot of fun to get apart when it's that tight on there. There we go. Well, maybe they'll come out. There we go. Okay. Well, I said it's snug, but this is a little ridiculous. You can see when I pulled this apart, the bearing actually stayed on this shaft instead of staying in the cover where it should be. So now I've got to try and get the bearing off, and then I'm going to measure this and see if maybe that is oversized or something. This is the second time I've used a third support setup like this brand new, and I didn't have this kind of trouble last time that I recall, so we'll see what's up here. Okay, so right there I'm getting 10.085, so round that up and just say 10.1 millimeters. So that's a little bit oversized. And I'm going to have to take that down in the lathe and then maybe I won't have an issue. Well, I'm not very experienced with this stuff. And this hardened steel <laughs> seems to just make things flex instead of actually taking material off. I've got kind of a polish on it, but... It doesn't want to take anything else off. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that on the camera, but especially if I push it in a little more, it basically just makes this whole shaft flex. I decided to try sanding to see if that would do it because I was really just polishing it with the uh, cutter. And that actually does seem to be taking a little off, so I'm just going to do that for a few and double check, see where my size is after that. That seemed to do the trick because now I've got 9.97 roughly all the way around there. So I think I am just going to hit it with a little finer paper, maybe to get some of that polish back on, and see what happens when I put the gearbox together. Before I go any further, here's another 6200 bearing and slides right on. It's not a lot of play, but it definitely goes on easily. New bearings in there. Now I just want to see if the cover will go on without all the other gears. Goes right on, no problem. Actually, still snug. Hmm. Oh, oh, there it goes. That's no, trying to push it in. Yeah, that's better. Everything's torqued, and I can still turn the drive shaft here. See the axle turning. I don't have a bunch of play in there, so that should be good to go. A little 
reminder because I've seen what happens if you forget to put gear oil in. And the reason I don't put it in right now just after finishing up the gearbox is because when I flip the engine over to install the center stand at some point, sometimes some of the gear oil will get into the overflow and then drip out. So I like to do it after it has had the center stand installed, but definitely don't want to forget that anymore.